QVC, America's quality cable shopping channel. Get ready for officially licensed memorabilia from the most popular science fiction trilogy in movie history. The Force is with us next in Star Wars Collectibles. Were you one of the hundreds of thousands of people who waited in line back in May of 1977? If you were, even if you weren't, maybe you weren't even born then, we have a rare treat for you. Really a ground floor collecting opportunity, if you would. Mark Hamill is here, the man who created the role of Luke Skywalker and has distinguished himself in so many aspects of the world of show business. Let's do this right now. We'll look at a few products coming up in the show. The minute you see them, they are available, and then we'll have a great conversation with Mark Hamill. We start off with advance orders. These will be shipped on the 13th of November. We're among the first people in the country to make this available. This is the letterbox edition. What does that mean? That means you will see this, see all three movies in the original Panavision. You'll see them the way they were intended to be viewed. You get a little black line on top and on the bottom of your TV. But as you go into a modern television, if you get a new TV in the next couple of years, all TVs will conform to letterbox format so you won't have a little black space on the top and the bottom. You will get all the action of Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi, along with a video, the making of the Star Wars saga, which is narrated by Mark Hamill. $87. E6960, and even though it's advance orders, we only have a limited number of the advance orders that we've been authorized to offer to you. You can dial in for that right now. And something that drove the phone lines crazy yesterday, I wore this wristwatch. These are the hologram watches, Darth Vader and Yoda. $35.50, three-dimensional laser holograms on wristwatches that will fit anything from about a five and a half, six inch wrist all the way up to an eight and a half inch wrist. You may dial in right now for J16147 for either wristwatch, the Darth Vader or the Yoda. The Yoda is the one that I have been wearing. Wait till you see him close up. Wait till you see that three dimensional hologram. And the one time only, you're way ahead of me. So many of you have started dialing in for this the minute this hour began. Only available for the next two hours. The three-volume comic strip collection for $135. Now, the Star Wars comic strip ran from 1981 to 1984 in the newspapers. This is reproduced in three hardcover books. The collaboration by writer Archie Goodwin and artist Al Williamson recognized as one of the best science fiction graphic stories told in comic strip form. All the comic strips that appeared over those three years available, and each book is individually signed and numbered by the artist. At 3874, only 2,500 will ever be created, and again, we have a, a small fraction of those to offer to you. The talents of actors Kenny Baker and Anthony Daniels as R2-D2 and C-3PO. The droids that captured our hearts in 77 and are still phenomenally popular today. This is a limited edition plaque. It measures 15 by 12. Only 2,500 of these will be made, each one individually numbered. C10,662 is $67. And again, you can dial in for it right now. And something that also has been phenomenally popular this early in the show. This is the Mark Hamill autograph plaque. Great picture of Mark autographed in silver ink. Each one is individually autographed, limited to only 1,000 pieces. $91.50, easy pay, three payments of $30.50. C10664, but please, if you're on the line for anything, there is a little bit of a wait already. Just bear with us. We'll get to you as quickly as we can. You know, this next guy looks good for $800. The limited edition Yoda print, $135. Only 750 of these ever created. Again, we have a tiny portion of those to offer to you. It measures 17 by 18 inches. It is signed and individually numbered by artist Michael Whelan. And of course, he's done so many science fiction book covers. He even did, I believe, what was it, Jedi Journal, which uh, this was the cover for. C10889, $135. Now, something brand new in the show. These are fun. 
These are movable pendants of R2-D2, the Astromech droid, and the protocol droid C-3PO. J-16149, $14.50. They're on their own chains. They're on their own 18-inch chains. One, the uh, uh, Astromech droid, R2-D2, is done in the silver tone, and C-3PO, can you imagine speaking 7 million languages? In the gold tone, $14.50. And we told you we had original collectibles from 1977. Here are some of them. Your choice of Yoda or Chewbacca Banks. These were made in 1977. They found them in a warehouse. The 10892, they're about seven and a half inches tall. And they're banks made in 1977. Ceramic, highly glazed banks. There's Chewbacca the Wookiee from the planet Kashuk and of course from his home of Dagobah, the Jedi Master Yoda. C-10-892, $30.75. And that's just a small sample of what we have to offer you in these next two hours, our first presentation ever of Star Wars Collectibles. He began his acting career on television. A lot of you might say, Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Didn't I see him in a soap opera? Yes, General Hospital, years and years back. Matter of fact, uh, he didn't even know he was auditioning for Star Wars when he did the original audition for Luke Skywalker. Join me in welcoming a multi-talented person to QVC, Mark Hamill. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mark. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Please, have a seat. Thanks. This is such a treat. Well, thank you. I'm great to be back in Pennsylvania. Uh, I went to school here in the oh, really? third grade, and I was racking my brains all day trying to think of the name <laughs> of the school, because I was only here one year. I do remember my teacher's name. It was Mrs. Cleveland, and she always would say, it's, it's Cleveland, not Cleveland. <laughs> she might call in tonight. You, you never know. You never know. I was telling you backstage, I've met so many people over the years. My father was in the Navy, mm -hmm. and we moved every two or three years. And uh, especially when you do Broadway or, or any theater where you're in a specific theater every single night rather than on location where people don't really know where you are, I've met old high school friends and uh, people I knew even in grade school, uh, all grown up with kids of their own. And uh, I was doing The Elephant Man in New York, and I came out the stage door, and my high school drama teacher was there, Lauren L. Summers, <laughs> and, uh, from Annandale, Virginia. And she gave me an award, I guess, that I had qualified for mm -hmm. back in high school. Uh, uh, so I got a letterman's letter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's funny. I'm sure I would have never got, bought mm -hmm. a letterman's jacket and put it on mm -hmm. in high school because it wasn't a wise thing to do when you had varsity football player. What did you letter in? Drama. Drama. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Band. I know exactly what. Trombone, Band, huh? Here, yeah, let me, let me sure. talk to you about that. But it's fun. You know, I, I, I think it's great and to go back and be able to see places. I went to Yokohama High School. In Japan? In Japan. And uh, to go back and see it all again, and it, it, from a helicopter, no less, and uh, all the things they say are true. You know, things look smaller to you. You can't believe that this mm -hmm. is really your locker. And uh, was the gym this tiny? Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. And it seems like everybody remembered me much fonder. I mean, they seem to have had better memories. I, I said I don't remember being but this popular when I was here. You probably weren't. But no, but I'm sure I wasn't. I'm sure I wasn't. You know, they were all sort of black jawed in amazement. You know <laughs> that I'd done anything at all. Well, we have the trilogy special collector's edition. These are the letterbox videos, which are done in the original Panavision, so you'll see that little black line on the top. No scanning. On the bottom of the screen, exactly right. It's a way to be seen. And what's really neat is, in three or four years, TV sets will grow into these videos. That's right. Because they'll be in, in the proper format. Now, these are advance orders. They're $87 for all three original Star Wars movies, along with the making of Star Wars, which is a video that uh, you narrated. That's right. Those are always the most fascinating to me, the making of. This was, and uh, I have seen, I have seen that making of, and what, what got me, and something I will never forget, is the way they made the sound effect of the blaster. Was that Ben Burt up on a telephone pole? He was on a, on a radio 
antenna, and it was the guy wire, and he was whacking right. the guy wire. Right. Oh, he's just oh. a brilliant artist. I mean, he created every, all the sounds in the film were built from scratch. Yes. So they, if they wanted a slamming door, you'd think, let's go record a slamming door, but they built everything right from scratch, and he's, he's really a great talent, that Ben Bird. It took him a year to compile all the sound effects for that first film. Right. Now, all four videos are here. These are all the original movies, again, done in Panavision. Plus, we have an abridged version of a book you'll see in, in complete version a little later in the show. This is George Lucas, The Creative Impulse. This abridged version of the, uh, really the first 20 years of oh, uh, the George Lucas. Book. Okay, okay now Lucas I haven't even yeah. seen that. Yeah, this is kind of nice because this really sort of cuts to the chase and gives you the high point uh, of... So I guess I should say some of the high points of, of his career. Plus, you get this ready for framing uh, graphic, which uh, really is a poster, I guess, from the first the first film. First three, actually. First, All right. of oh, them are right. represented. Yeah. But he's been working on that book a long time because Charles Champlin interviewed mm -hmm. me a year ago, and uh, um, there's things in that book I had no idea of. I mean, you're going to learn something if you read that uh, Charles Champlin book. You really will. And of course, it all comes in a collector's edition box with a three-dimensional hologram. And again, there's, there's that poster. That Look, I'm a hologram. <laughs> well, you're three-dimensional. I'm a baseball card, a comic <laughs> book, and finally, finally, I'm a hologram, and it's about time. That must be something. Do you ever get tired of being identified with the Skywalker character? Well, the, the people that come up to you really love it, and they're mostly young people, mm -hmm. and, and so no, I never, never get tired. I mean, it, you have to separate that from being tired, professionally being associated, if it precludes you from doing anything else, but I've been really lucky, you know, I've wanted to play character mm -hmm. parts, and I've really had uh, uh, a lot of luck, especially in New York on right, stage. You've been doing a great deal of work on Broadway. Well, I got to do Elephant Man, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. and uh, that led to uh, Amadeus, and I did yeah. that on the road, so I got to travel. I went to Los Angeles and San Francisco, Baltimore, Chicago, and then I did it on Broadway for about six months. I even did a, a musical comedy. Really? Harrigan and Hart. It was, wasn't a great success in New York. We did it at the Goodspeed Opera in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and it was a tremendous experience, you know, because the the fact of the matter is, whether or not it's a commercial success, it doesn't take away the fact that it was a really special show and a very special cast. And uh, I mean, as I went and I auditioned and got further and further to the point where they said, you have the part, I thought, my gosh, what did I get myself into? I'm really not an experienced musical comedy performer. And uh, all those kids had been in nine, ten musicals. Ah. They sent me to uh, dance class. DJ Gianni was the choreographer, and I had to go four times a week for eight weeks. And it took the rest of the cast a half a day to learn the whole thing. And you had, well, you had to take a They're the hardest working people in show business. No, I kid you not. They get in two hours early. They warm up vocally. They warm up physically to, so they can dance eight times a week. It's, it's, that has to be incredible. Oh, it's so exciting. Yeah, and that's it. The live audience is so energizing. Uh, if you're going to be an actor, you do want those live audiences. But uh, um, and I missed it. You know, I've been in uh, film and television so, for so long. But then you get in a stage and you miss film and television. So that's true. Well, you get a, really a chance to do it all. Right. Now you mentioned auditioning. Right. When you auditioned for the role of Luke Skywalker, you really had gone to audition for Carrie. Yeah, well, uh, Brian De Palma was seeing, they call him cattle call, because it's the initial seeing of everybody for shape and size and type and, and whatnot. And then they weed out people in terms of there's no way that person can play it. And from that, then you'd probably get sides or pages to, to do a scene. So he was looking at people, everybody, for, to play high school uh, uh, mm -hmm. students. And sitting next to him was this gentleman who sat and he didn't say a single word. He just sat there. And you didn't know who he no, was? No, I thought maybe he was Brian's uh, assistant? assistant, you know? I'm glad I didn't ask him to run out and get me a coffee, you know? <laughs> oh, geez. Well, he had already done, at that point, already done uh, American Graffiti. He did American Graffiti, and uh, I was, uh, it was a tremendous film. I loved that movie, but uh, I didn't know what he looked like, and I didn't know who he was, and maybe that was for the better, you know? Because, you know, he's a someone who knows what he wants, and I'm sure he was able to observe 
without having the attention placed on him. Because, you know, there's that uncomfortable quality in an audition oh, of, sure. the, of the mm -hmm. artist wanting to please. And, uh, you know, I've been on the other side of the casting table, too, where I'm sitting yeah. and helping. And it's, uh, it's terribly hard because you tend to see something that's right in everybody. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, you it, know, it is a tough decision it's, it's to make. Very I'm tough. sure, very tough. Right now, if you're on the line, please bear with us. We kind of knew this would happen. Over 400 of these have been ordered so far. These will be shipped to you on the 13th of November. E6960, the complete Star Wars film trilogy, along with the making of Star Wars, narrated by Mark Hamill, the abridged version of the George Lucas story, all in that collector's box with a hologram. $87. Bear with us. Lots more Star Wars collectibles still to come. Still available are one time only. Oh boy. <laughs> but maybe not available for long. It's F3874. Just $135. And that price in effect just for these next two hours. And now about uh, next one hour and 40 minutes. That's all the comic strips from the newspaper from 1981 to 1984. That's Limited edition. Isn't that great? Signed Al by the Williamson. artist. Yeah. Al Williamson is a student of Alex Raymond. Alex Raymond did all the original Flash Gordon. Mm -hmm. And uh, Al Williamson was one of the premier artists for the EC line in the 50s. The horror comics. Yeah. Not, but he was more associated with the science fiction and fantasy mm -hmm. because he had that sort of lush style that was associated with like... Uh, say, uh, Prince Valiant. Mm -hmm. Like I say, Alex Raymond is considered like one of the gods of, of fantasy illustration. So, but Al, Al Williamson is just really one of my favorite artists. And I love that comic strip. My acting is much better that. in the comic strip, <laughs> by the way. You got great lines. And uh, <laughs> we have a QVC exclusive right now. This is a Star Wars sweatshirt. Remember, everything you're going to see in this show is brand new to QVC. We commissioned this uh, and uh, got licensed to do it with, of course, the 1977-1992, uh, the 15th anniversary logo. And there you have Dave wearing it. It's available in large, extra large. It's 50-50 cotton poly, machine washable, A10-180. And again, we will be the absolute exclusive source for that for all time. And that is, that's such, that's such a good looking thing. It's got a nice little bit of drama to it, too. It's not overdone. And going back to the, uh, uh, to the first film, those first few days of, of filming, and it was shot in England, correct? But the first few days of filming were in North Africa because we did the stuff uh, that was meant to be on my planet, oh, Tatooine, yeah. the desert mm -hmm. planet. So we were out on the sand dunes, which is 360 degrees of horizon. It's, uh, it's sand, but beneath the sand is salt water, so there's no vegetation at all. Mm had all the props out there, the robots, the land speeder, and the costume, and my belt, and I, you know, it was like the ultimate playground. <laughs> it really was fun. Did you realize the importance of that motion picture in those early days when you were making I thought it? it? I always thought it would be successful. I mean, obviously, I couldn't predict the extent of it, but uh, I, I remember they, they said at the time, if, the contract was for three films. The first one was successful. We, we you know, it was a three-part story, and I thought pretty sure. I said this thing, I bet, would be probably as popular as Planet of the Apes. I thought at the time. Mm -hmm. So I thought about on those levels. Uh, but it, no one could foresee your face on a lunchbox and an electric toothbrush. <laughs> and thousands of little Luke Skywalker figurines, yeah, and millions of little Luke Skywalker it's figurines fun. over it's great fun. We have a lot of viewers, I'm sure, who want to talk to you. Okay. Like this one. Let's go to the phone lines and say hi. Welcome to QVC. You're live with Mark Hamill. Hi, I'm Beverly from Mobile, Alabama. Hi, hi Beverly. Beverly. Hi, great to see you, Mark. Thank you. I'm a big fan of Star Wars and all the characters and the actors who play the characters. Uh huh. And it was really nice to see all the movies and see how the characters developed, especially yours. Thank you. Yes, I really enjoyed that. But I will have to say, yes. I mean, no reflection on you at all. You were great. Well, Darth thank you. Vader was my favorite. Thank you very much <laughs> for calling. Oh, that's well, quite all right. Beverly, what have you dialed in for in the show? I got the Darth Vader hologram watch. And you say he was he was your favorite character. What appealed to you about Darth Vader? Do you look for that when you're dating? <laughs> <laughs> no. Fear of the unknown, Beverly. He's sinister. 
<laughs> no, no. He was big and he breathed so well. Yes, he did. That's right. Aggressive and he knew what he wanted and he took it. That, mm -hmm. You like right. that decisiveness, I but think. I, I really and truly just freaked my friends out at that time. The first time I saw the movie, I said, I told everybody, I said, Darth Vader is going to be turned to the good side. Really? Yes. <laughs> See, now, I didn't even, I didn't predict that. <laughs> I did. I <laughs> Although, you know what I thought? I thought after the second one, I thought the Luke character would probably be struggling in the third one. Mm -hmm. He was becoming his father with the, 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 the gloved hand and so forth. Yeah, now, that took me by surprise. Luke and Darth Vader, their relationship. That right. Yeah. I, I think it took us all by surprise. Oh, and realized, yes. And uh, that, was, that was great. <laughs> it, it was uh, Anakin. Skywalker. Right. Which is, uh, right. But you see, you know, since we got the chapters, we got them a year and a half before the public, but, you know, mm -hmm. we, we still had to wait uh, our turn to find out. Everyone sort of wanted their own input or, or predicted what right. they thought would happen. I mm -hmm. remember, uh, you know, Harrison thinking one thing and and uh, you know you you are sort of making the saga up saying well i i'd like yes. it to kind of go this yes, way yes yes exactly mm -hmm. and then of course george says that you know he that he had it all up in up here mm -hmm. so we we're always trying to pick his say well his no brain what, and what, say yeah what, what why is? would i do this <laughs> what's the motivation here and yeah so i mean he was cagey he'd let mm -hmm. you know just enough yeah and uh let the rest of it be a surprise well, he would. always left us waiting for the next movie always I know. People ask yeah. me that more often than any other question. When's the next one? Yeah. Well, I've been keeping tabs with that. I saw an interview this morning. Um, yeah, I think George was on uh, the Today Show a couple yeah. of days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got so more information out of that piece <laughs> about what he's doing, you really? know, and what his plans are than, uh, well, because when I see him, mm -hmm. I don't say, no, oh, he's going to make another movie. That's it. I don't, inter I don't interview him about what he's doing, you know. Yeah. And when I find out he's doing yeah. young, young Indiana Jones or Tucker mm -hmm. or whatever it is, um, I find out, just like the general public, I, I miss him. I don't see him as much as I'd like to, unfortunately. Yeah, With yeah. three kids and a wife, yeah. you know, I'm surprised I get out of the house at all. Well, Beverly, we thank you very much for your call. I hope That's you enjoy the rest of the show. Can you do me one favor? Sure, if we, if we can. Mike, say hello to Missy and Michael. Hello, Missy and Michael. What are you doing up this late? <laughs> They're keeping me company. <laughs> yeah. Good answer. Beverly, thanks for the call. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Right now, we are still phenomenally busy. If you're on the line for the sweatshirt, it's exclusive to QVC. 50-50 Cotton Poly Blend. We had it commissioned for the 15th anniversary of the first movie. It's A10180. Still available is the limited edition Star Wars Yoda print. $135, only 750 were ever created for worldwide consumption. Yes, mean, Each one pay. individually numbered. Easy pay, three payments of $45. C10889. And your choice of Star Wars pendants, the uh, Silver Tone R2D2 or the Gold Tone C3PO, $14.50. Those were specially made for us here at QVC. QVC, the enjoyable way to shop. Starting Monday, it's Gem Week on QVC, the biggest gem event of the holiday season and your last chance this year to take advantage of Gem Week savings. Watch for a different hour of gemstone jewelry every night at 11 p.m. Eastern and a big four-hour grand finale at 8 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. We'll bring you Gem Week prizes, brand new designs, and extra low Gem Week prices on selected styles throughout each day, all week long. Shop early and avoid the hassles with our biggest gem event of the holiday season, Gem Week, starting Monday, here on QVC. I'm looking for someone. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say. <laughs> right. Help you, I can. Yes. Mm. I don't think so. I'm looking for a great warrior. <laughs> Great warrior. <laughs> War is not this one. Great. <laughs> what must it have been like to work with the, one of the most gifted puppeteers, I guess, of all time, Frank Oz? 
Uh, a dream come true. I've been a Muppets fan since the Ed Sullivan show mm -hmm. as a kid. Uh, Frank is just wonderful. I mean, he can't, couldn't be that uh, wonderful a person and have it not come out through his puppetry. And it does, of course, you know, with all of his characters, Fozzie and, and Miss Piggy. And, you know, so many people work to, to make that. I think, you know, see, he did the mouth in the right hand and mm -hmm. Catherine was on the left hand. And let's see, there were one, two, three, four people on cables. And, in any given different situation, there were at least four or five people. And was it a standard Muppet? He sort of wore it on his head and uh, was down Pretty below? Pretty much. There was more mechanics involved in the head than they'd ever done before. I mean, probably until that time. And uh, they were all buried in the floor. You know, I mean, everyone was out of sight, camouflaged, so it was very lonely on the set. And I had a little earpiece in my ear, a little radio mic. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on how you tilted your head, you could pick up pop radio. <laughs> so it would go from, mm, hungry are you? Oh, hungry. Uh. And the next thing you know, it would be uh, Abba singing Dancing Queen. <laughs> 14 after 5 o'clock here in the big LA. Well, yeah. it was in England. Oh, England. That's yeah. a wrong. So it's a little bit different, but, but mm -hmm. still, that was the idea. And uh, of course, uh, I tried to uh, even make takes where that happened work mm -hmm. because uh, it, it was so hard to make everything come off. The, you know, the ears were controlled separately and the, all, all the facial movements by a different puppeteer. The watches have been phenomenally popular. It's the Yoda watch that I've been wearing for about the last week. J16147, a three-dimensional laser hologram. Fascinating how they make these. They take an object. In this case, they took, would take a, literally a bust of either Yoda or Darth Vader and put a mirror behind it and fire an argon laser at it. That way they can get a perfect three-dimensional image because they're getting laser light from the front and the laser light reflected from the mirror from behind. And as you turn these, you do get the full view of the characters. Both are still available. Both, though, as we go into them now, are in very, very short supply. A quartz accurate wristwatch, one that people have been stopping me in convenience stores and delicatessen and saying, what is that? I've never seen it. I've never seen it before. It's just such a wild-looking watch. Let me just bring these into the camera. I'll do the... Uh, there we go. Do the Darth Vader. I'm amazed at how well they photograph. There you can see the three-dimensional quality of it. Which surprises me on television. You yeah. can see the 3D effect. If it looks that good on TV, it really, it even looks clearer in person as they, uh, as they go around. Now, the whole concept of, of the Jedi was something that, uh, of course, lived in Lucas's imagination. What did you have to go through to learn how to be as graceful as you were with the lightsaber? Well, first of all, I mean, the people that, uh, that worked with me, and not only behind the scenes, but then on camera, were all experts. And obviously, if you have people that uh, well-trained, they will make you look as good as possible. But it, it was almost like a, a core, a going and learning the choreography for the musical comedy. You know, in the one sense, they would, uh, you might say, I took kendo and karate and, and the obvious martial arts, oh. but, but then when it was choreographed for the screen, that's when it became like a routine. And uh, especially in Empire, because the sets were built really high and the, it was supposed to be the carbon freezing chamber, and of course, to create the effect of frigid air, it's mm -hmm. hot steam. So it was like sword fighting in a sauna bath mm -hmm. six days a week. And that, that uh, sequence, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I, and it's been so long now, but, I, but it took over eight weeks. It's all cut mm -hmm. down, but uh, it was the most elaborate kind of, um, you know, uh, action sequence I had done physically. It was really difficult. Eight weeks for that one. Season. Yeah, mm. yeah. And, you know, I'll never forget it. And, of course, the way it's cut together, it takes place in a couple mm. of minutes. That's right. That's right. You don't yeah. realize that. Right now, we're awful busy again. Bear with us. Both watches still available, but these will probably be among the first things to sell out on the show. $35.50, J16147.
watches were the first thing to sell out. If you're on the line, please just, again, have a little bit of patience. We, we knew this first show would be this, this kind of a barn burner. As we look at something special enough that Mark said it's, it's what he wants. That's the one I want. This is done so well. It's limited edition, first of all, only, I believe it's 2,500 in this one. Only 2,500 created. We have a small fraction to offer you. And because today's special value sold out, we're offering it at a one-time only price of $135. That price, in effect, just for this show. Let me turn this right here. Open it up to the uh, autograph. There we go. Each one is autographed and individually numbered by both the artist and the writer. Let me get a close shot. There you go. And, of course, contains all the newspaper comic strips that were produced between 1981 and 1984. He's great. He's great. I know. Look at how graceful yeah. his line work is. And he redid, He also did the covers as well. In fact, these covers were done especially for this hardbound book collection. You get three books plus the binder, all for $135. And just nicely, nicely done. I remember thinking at the time, who, I really should cut these strips out and paste them in a book, <laughs> but nobody, who has the time or the effort? Well, that's know? right. Nobody realized just how big a phenomenon, and as I was saying to the viewers earlier, this really is a banner opportunity, because I think getting into Star Wars collectibles now would have been like looking into baseball cards about 15 years ago. I think it's, it's just beginning to trend up. You're seeing mm. at the, the science fiction conventions more and more Star Wars collectibles being offered. And we're, we're delighted tonight to have those two banks that uh, date back to 1970. Well, now we're starting to get the, the parents and, and kids that That's are right. co-fans. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of, it's got a little bit of nostalgia going for it, but it's fun because, uh, you know, some of these young parents uh, dated in high school and went to see these things. Now they've got the little ones. I, I never foresaw the videotape aspect of it. I thought, you know, it would have its heyday and the, everybody would go on to whatever the next thing was. But especially young people love these films. Do your kids watch them? They went through a phase where they, it was a mania, and I didn't put, mm -hmm. push it on them at all, uh, where they wanted to play it and color in the books and do it all. You know, they've outgrown it now. Nathan is 13. I mean, I'm sure, sure they still really enjoy them, but not with the fanaticism of youth. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, when the first film came out, I was in May, I was one of the people in line on that first day, and I was about an hour and a half in line to, to finally get the up. The very first day you went? The very first day. Oh, I had, I had to. I mean, there had been so much. I'm, I'm a big science fiction fan. Right. Said, this, is, this has been ballyhooed so well, and I've seen the clips, and I've seen the TV interviews, and this is going to be an exciting film. Mark, I lost count at 15. Fifteen. Oh, and, uh, how many times you've seen this? <laughs> Fifteen times in the theater, because every time you would see something different. Every uh -huh. time, and of course, back then in my case, every time it was a different young lady that you were going to the theater with, and, and you, you were like kind of like a big wheel saying, "Let me get this part. Mm. Right there. Don't look behind there." <laughs> Anyhow, uh, the three-volume comic strip collection, which really was a wonderful saga. It it really continued uh, a lot of the action and, and adventure, uh, a lot like the Timothy Zahn book. The, uh, the two, Heir to the Empire and Dark Side Rising. I haven't read those, but I sure get a lot of reaction on the street. It's, it's interesting to see what has happened in, in the continuing saga. Of course, Le it's interesting how art imitates life, because Leia is pregnant with Jedi twins. She and Han got married. Oh. And, uh, and you reached out with the Force, and you found out they were Jedi. Am I meditating out in the desert or something? Oh, no, you're, you're every, the, the uh, new... Rebel Alliance depends on you a great deal. You are the first Jedi. You are the first full-fledged Jedi oh, okay. to come on since the uh, uh, Empire slaughtered them and, and wiped them out. I gotta get with it, man. <laughs> it's, it's a fascinating saga, it really is. Right now, though, we go to the phones and say hi. You're live on QVC with Mark Hamill. Hi, my name is Eric. I'm from Lowellville, Ohio. Uh, how you doing, Steve? Eric, I'm doing fine. Let me introduce you to Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi. It, uh, can I ask a favor of you? Say hello to Jay. That's my brother. Jay, is it? Yes. Hi, Jay. How you doing? We uh, we grew up on the movies, and it was like you described it's mania, and it still is. I'm 22 now. Right. My brother's 20, and we. So still you were seven when it came out, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big impressionable age. Well, that's the nice thing about it. I mean, it is science fiction, but it has a lot of the 
I think the qualities and the, uh, the, the, the sense of nobility and self-sacrifice that the, the tales of King Arthur had. So, I mean, it came at a time when uh, I think the country was ready for positive role models. Mm. not the uh, yeah. angry returning Vietnam War vet, you know, I mean, instead of grounded in the everyday reality, the bad guys weren't drug pushers, they were, you know, Malevolent. people in, uh, in funny <laughs> masks bent on, uh, world, you know, universe mm. domination. But, uh, I, you know, like I say, when kids say, uh, where did you think it all came from? And, and George is uh, very forthcoming about it coming from all the great classics, uh, uh, Treasure Island and, mm -hmm. and um, Captain all, Blood, Captain and Blood and all those great pirate films. Of his, there's, like you say, there's influences all through it, from The Wizard of Oz yeah. to uh, Robin Hood. But I think it appeals to a very noble uh, feeling in all of us uh, of self-sacrifice and really putting your life on the line in the name of friendship. So uh, that's why I think that, I mean, it, it has certain timeless elements in it that, uh, you know, continue to uh, find new audiences. Eric, what have you dialed in for in the show? I ordered the comic book collection. This is See, a, that's what right. I go for. Yeah, this, this, this is a treasure when you think that they're only going to do 2,500 and that'll be it. And unless you did take the time to uh, take them out of the newspaper and paste them in. And I'll bet there are some people out there who did that. Oh, I'm absolutely Yo, positive. Oh. You know, I'm mm -hmm. a comic book collector myself. Mm -hmm. And Al Williamson is really one of the great oh. idols in illustration. Mm -hmm. I was really knocked out by this. You see, because originally it was a comic book from Marvel and uh, yeah. Howard Chaikin who did it. Mm -hmm. the, he couldn't get any photographic references while he was drawing it because we were still making it and they were so secretive about it. So we had to speculate on a lot of things. And, you know, I, I, I worked with Howard again. Uh, he wrote the trickster episodes of The Flash that I was in. So it was oh, a kind great. of a nice yeah. reunion. He had done the original mm -hmm. Star Wars comic book, and now he was writing this, this episode of The Flash. Not only did he write it, but he has a cameo uh, as one of my hostages in the joke store. He's tied up with the other writer. No it was the kidding. ultimate actor's revenge <laughs> to tie up your writers <laughs> right, and hold them hostage. I had forgotten about that. Right. that and that series, the demise of that series, was a crime because it was so well done. We had so much fun doing oh. it, you know. I mean, having grown up and seen the, the Batman television show, mm -hmm. that's the closest I'll come to the Batman television show. But I actually had the line, to the trickster mobile. And I loved it, you know. <laughs> to the trickster right. mobile. That's right. I love it. Just oh. the whole concept of costume super mm -hmm. villains, you I, know, I, is I, so great. I love it too. I actually freelance. I want to be sort of incognito, so I'll put on this flashy oh. spandex costume. There you go. There you go. And of course, it's a, a great inducement to stay in shape too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, Eric, thank you very much for the call. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Eric. Eric. Bye -bye. Well over half of these now, something like three quarters of these have been ordered so far. The price in effect only for this show, but I think we can say now with impunity, it's going to sell out before this show is over. It's F3874, $135, each one numbered and signed by both the writer and the artist, and you get three volumes and the collector's binder. You haven't seen this uh, close up yet, but this is the Star Wars 15th anniversary poster by Melanie Taylor Kent. People like Ronald Reagan have Melanie Taylor Kent artwork in their homes. Uh, Bill Cosby has Melanie Taylor Kent artwork. This was taken from the original stereograph she produced for the Lucas Art people. And it's rare that we have the poster because usually they wait months after they do a stereograph to do the poster. This came out simultaneously, and we're really the first folks to offer you this poster. It's $26.25. And also, some of our original 1977 collectibles are getting in very short supply. C10892, your choice of Yoda or Chewbacca Banks. QVC price, $30.75. They were made in 1977. I thought you were about to say, uh, people like Ronald Reagan have ordered this poster. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, I didn't think that's what he meant when he said Star Wars. Oh, 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 very good. Well, do you remember that? You know, yeah. there was that whole uh, I, discussion I of whether or not they could use that phrase mm -hmm. to define the strategic defense Fence initiative. Yeah. Initiative, and of all the court cases that came out of the mm -hmm. movie, you know, and in this day and age, there is just there's going to be a there's lawsuit. going to be uh, litigation. 
uh, that was the one that I really was concerned with because I said, yeah, I think they should keep uh, children's fantasy separate from something that's so rooted in reality, and we lost. They said it's right. too generic a term mm -hmm. because all the network newscasts refer to it that way. Interesting court case uh, with, uh, for the first movie with rock star Neil Young. He actually used the sand people in uh, one of his videos. I think in Rust Never Sleeps, he used the sand people without permission and uh, they settled out of court. But, but they he just got a mask from the he, stores. He had them cavorting in the background. It didn't oh. seem to make a whole lot of sense to what he was doing, but he was sort of... So after the Gold Rush, was that after our movies, or are you saying was it before? No, it was, it was actually right after the first film. Oh, I didn't even know had, about that he one. He had the, uh, the sand folks. As we look at, uh, I guess, two creatures and actors, two actors and creatures that I guess rekindled our love of robots. C-3PO and R2-D2 versus Kenny Baker, Anthony Daniels. This is a limited edition plaque. A lot of you have dialed in for it already. It's $67. It's all ready to hang. The uh, photo is already covered with clear acrylic, and each one is individually numbered out of a limited edition of only 1,000 of these. And the, the droid's roles in the films were, were great. And it was interesting, too, how especially R2-D2 evolved as your best buddy and actually as your Jedi confidant. He was the one who went through the Jedi training with you on Dagobah. Well, I thought it was one of the most appealing things about the script, and you got that just reading the scripts without seeing any drawings or anything, was that, the, that by intent, just for fun, you had the robots displaying some of the most human emotions of being afraid and nervous and trying to blame, this is your fault, no, this is my fault. And, I mean, they really were like our Laurel and Hardy comic relief. And then, you know, R2 later took on that kind of uh, uh, Lassie or Rin Tin Tin quality. He was the faithful <laughs> companion. And even Chewbacca was the, not only was mm -hmm. he the family dog, but he could fly your spaceship. And fix it. And, and fix, fix it. it. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, it really, I think, uh, it was brilliant the way it tied into the fantasies mm -hmm. of of young people that that Luke wasn't, six foot nine and you know mm -hmm. with the gigantic Rippling rambo muscles, muscles right. exactly mm -hmm. in martial arts but you know just through whatever uh, modest uh, abilities he had with the combination of you know self-reliance and, and a belief in something mm -hmm. you know having convictions could um, ultimately make him a winner again uh it's it just it really was uh, special well interesting of course uh, c-3po is one is, is a is a well I know I can say this he is a C3 droid the C3s were the astromech droids they're the ones that we you would put in a spaceship especially in, a, in an X-wing fighter you could pre-program them with uh, hyperdrive courses so when you made your jump to light speed you wouldn't go ramming into a planet. How do you know all this stuff? Fifteen times for the first oh, okay. film. What does this tell you? Well, <laughs> it tells me that we have an expert here and it's not me. Oh no, well, you you've got to fly the X-wing. Come on. Although that is a goal of mine someday. Anyhow, and of course, uh, the uh, uh, C-3PO, the C-3 series, the protocol droids, uh, of course, your uncle wasn't impressed by the fact that he could speak seven million languages. That's right. He said, I have no need for a, you know, no need for a diplomat. That's right. See, I mean, this is great. I haven't seen the movies, actually, since the year they came out. I, and I, I saw them two or three times, let's mm -hmm. say, the year they came out. But for me, it has an aspect of... Uh, it has that high school yearbook feeling about it yeah. because you go back and see the way you looked and mm -hmm. sounded. But uh, um, again, a protocol droid is that what he's called? Because yeah. mm -hmm. it is. It really is like a, a having a like a butler up in space. A butler interpreter, uh, you know, Man Friday kind of thing. Hudson. G good. Like exactly. from upstairs downstairs. Exactly. Sixty-seven dollars. C ten six sixty-two. Only one thousand will be made. Each one individually numbered. Getting in kind of small supply now are Yoda prints. This is signed by the artist, Michael Whelan. Individually numbered, only 750 exists, $135, easy pay, three payments of $45, C10889. And our Star Wars pendant, J16149, C3PO and R2D2, $14.50. This is a brand new book. We are literally introducing this to the country before it jumps into the bookstores. 
This is called Star Wars from Concept to Screen to Collectible. And if you're serious about collecting Star Wars memorabilia or you just love the film, it's a must-have. I devoured this book. Took it with me on the, uh, on the stationary bike at the gym and just tore through it. Great scenes from all three movies. This is, this is one of my favorites. Absolutely one of my favorite scenes when Yoda's trying to explain to you that lifting the fighter out of the swamp is the same deal as moving a pebble. Right. And, then, and then, of course, classic Jedi philosophy. You know, no, try not. <clears throat> I'll do this. No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. Very good. Leave thank your you. name with the girl outside if anything turns thank you, out. Thank you, Mr. Hamill. I, it was a but this, what, <laughs> this is like, this is to list all the collectibles, right? Yes, all the collectibles are in here. They go into the uh, historical collectibles and give you some really wild facts. In fact, the, the uh, thing I brought up about Neil Young is actually in here. Oh, it is. They give you little facts throughout. They call them little Star, Star right. Wars factoids. They tell you about the uh, spaceship designs. For example, uh, the Millennium Falcon. Uh, Lucas always called it the Flying Hamburger. Oh, it yeah. was inspired by hamburgers. Sure. Uh, the bounty hunter, Boba Fett, right. his spaceship was designed after one of the lights, one of the street lights out by Industrial Light and Magic. Man, that's a real interesting looking spacecraft, that Boba Fett. It is. Very like Ralph a... Ralph like a... painting mm -hmm. are amazing. I'm, I'm anxious to look at a few things, because, you know, whenever they change... Uh, an item here you see a Jawa it originally came in a mm -hmm. cloth cape and then they switched to the vinyl cape. Yes. One's going to have a different mm -hmm. value than the other and that's the fun of collecting. That is. Uh, and a lot of people have these figurines. I think Kenner, Kenner did uh, 42 million Star Wars collectibles in 1978. Is that right? Over 42 million collectibles and, and of that I think two or three million were uh, Luke and Princess Leia figurines. Wow. Yeah. And, and again, all that information right in here talks about the different lines, goes through again. They had outfits for the Princess Leia dolls. <laughs> Honest and true, as a princess, I always thought she should have had a better hairdo. But well, I think she had a few words to say <laughs> about that, too. I'm not <laughs> sure she was so happy. But you know, the way that hair is, it's so hard to find the doll without it yeah. all unraveled. You're right. So again, I bet you that they talk about that in there. I haven't seen this yet, but this this is fascinating, absolutely fascinating reading, going through all the different designs for the ships, the backdrops, the characters, giving you uh, the history, a lot of behind the scenes history in here too. If you're a real trivia buff, it'd be great for you. It's F3875 for $29.75, and it's more than likely not in the bookstore near you. We get a chance to introduce it to you as we head over to the lucky number machine with Karen right now time for this hour's drawing. A new four-digit lucky number is drawn every hour on the QVC cable shopping channel. Every time that number matches either the first four digits or the last four digits of your QVC membership number, and you notify QVC by phone that you have a match before the next lucky number is drawn, your QVC account will be credited with 10 QVC shopper dollars. And you'll also be automatically entered in all five of the next day's $1,000 QVC shopping spree drawings. If you don't already have a QVC membership number, get yours now. It's completely free, no purchase is necessary, and there's absolutely no obligation. Just call toll-free 1-800-345-1515, and a QVC membership number will be assigned to you on the phone. It matches the first four or the last four digits of their number, and they call in before the next one is drawn. They get, uh... What number? Their QVC membership number. Oh, okay. It's on, their, on the membership card. Current lucky number is 0636. 0636, well over half the books have been ordered. Let's go to the phones, though, again, and say hi. Welcome to QVC. You're live with Mark Hamill. Hi, what's your name? Where do you live, please? Hello? Is the caller there? I've always wanted to say that. Very good. Very good. You, do that, you do that well. We'll try to get them back. A little telephone hiccup. Right now, F3875, the Star Wars from concept to screen collectible. This is going to be out there in the bookstores eventually, but we're among the first folks to be introducing it to you. $29.75. Also available, that exclusive QVC Star Wars 15th Anniversary Sweatshirt, $26.25. That's A10180.
Steven Spielberg, Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley, Frank Sinatra, Gregory Peck, Liza Minnelli, Michael Jackson, Mike Ditka, Jonathan Winters, just a few of the people who collect this lady's artwork. Is that right? Yeah. Melanie Taylor Kent, now she's known mostly for doing scenic of streets and different uh, special places. She works a lot for the Disney people, but she was commissioned by Lucas Arts to do the seriograph a 15th anniversary seriograph taking scenes from all three movies. And we are lucky to be among the first people in the country to introduce this poster to you. It's two feet by three feet, $26.25. Now we have it mounted on some poster board. It's gonna be shipped to you, rolled up in a tube, so no, no creases, all ready to frame. And I would definitely frame it. I'd put it in the den or certainly right there where the rest of your collectibles are. Just some great shots of the millennium, well, the old mouth stopped working tonight. The Millennium Falcon, and of course, of Ben Kenobi in that classic duel with Darth Vader. Great shots of the X-Wing fighters. I want to say, oh, and a couple of Y-Wings, too. Uh, Admiral Akbar flew, flew a Y-Wing. He was, and I love the name. Now, he was that, he was the fish guy. <laughs> and yes, he the was lobster a, man. Exactly. He looked, he was sort of a salmon pink color and had that yeah. wonderful fish kind of underwater voice. And his species was called the Mon Calamari. And I always thought that was <laughs> like, you'd, you know, you'd go to Spago and that would be on the menu someday. Yes. Oh, it's great shots of the, the Death Star. And just a, it's, it's interesting because I've, I've seen this a lot over the last week or so and I saw it backstage. Every time you look at it, you see something different. You see the TIE fighters, the uh, stormtroopers, and uh, some guy in a tunic with a light to Yeah, there you are. To, uh, I like this right here, the swinging shot. That is a good shot. But see, that's right out of the swashbuckling movies of the 30s. Oh, it, it is. It is. Oh, we have an update for you. Another sellout. What At this it? point, the book is gone. We thank you for your calls on F3875. But that is uh, reading dead zero. It's completely gone right now in the system. Our poster, well, used to have to go to some pretty highfalutin art galleries to find uh, not only the seriographs, but even to find posters like this. And we're delighted to, to be able to bring this to you. Brings back a lot of memories for me. This was the first one that, that went and saw the movies multiple times. I love Chewbacca, the whole idea of, of a Wookiee. And I think Lucas modeled him after a, a, a wolf, a part wolf, part mule, and and his dog, too, played a role in the design of the... Of yeah, the George loves his family dog. Yeah. Well, he had a dog named Indiana long before those mm -hmm. movies, so... That's right, and it's great to see the young Indiana, Indiana Jones Chronicles doing so well. I think so. There's nothing like it on television. It, it is innovative TV, and they got real smart, let it lead into Monday Night Football and build that audience in. Well, that's the problem. On the West Coast, you see, it has to follow Monday Night Football because football's live. Oh, that's right. I think once we get it out of the... It seems to me a show that should be on at 7 o'clock on Sundays, like the old... Uh, Disney? Disney. Yeah. I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. in television programming, but put it on when you, people can see it. And, and keep it on. I mean, don't move it around. I don't, I don't miss it. I mean, it's, it's a great family show. Kids will it's love it. And it's amazing something that ambitious could be on commercial television. That's yeah. so terrific for ABC to stick its neck mm -hmm. out like that. And uh, especially after seeing that piece on George on the Today Show, I think, uh, you know, there's just no question he's one of the greatest innovators. Oh. Th those techniques that he's working on, the way they filled out the, with the, you know, it, it's like the modern version of matte painting. Oh, the, yes. The way they mm -hmm. could uh, put in extras along the airstrip when they weren't there. Mm -hmm. That's the technology that you're going to see when he continues on with these uh, stories because uh, uh, he's, you know, he thought of making all three of these at once, just shoot for a solid year mm -hmm. and cut them up into three movies. And I think that's probably the way he'll get the next trilogy done because uh, the, the, what he's learning, he's using that young Indiana Jones as mm -hmm. uh, a Proving drawing well. board uh, of techniques to be able to uh, uh, continue on. We were looking at the set, walking around the set, and in a quiet moment on the, on the first film, he, we were looking up at this, this great Death Star set, and he said to me that, uh, you know, in a few years, the cost, you know, with petroleum going up and all of this and the, just the world economy, these kind of extravaganzas will be prohibitively expensive. 
unless, mm -hmm. and again, again, he's visionary. It was yep. years ago. You're going to be able to build a separate puppet stage on another sound stage, and miniaturized, then lay it in. then lay it in with high resolution videotape with the actors. I mean, it, it'll get even more uh, removed. It'll get harder for the actors mm -hmm. because everything we're sitting on will be blue, and when you see it, it'll be <laughs> uh, the, Java's palette. Exactly. But I mean, instead of spending three and a half million dollars mm -hmm. on that set, they might be able to build it for fifty thousand. And and uh, you know, it's incredible to me that he's uh, he's done so much in so little time. And he continues to do. Right now, right. well over 400 posters have been ordered. It's $26.25. We are introducing this. This is really not available anywhere else yet. It will be. But again, the stereograph was done. She was commissioned to do that, and she did the poster literally simultaneously so we could bring it to you. And as you dial in for that, let's jump to the phone lines and say hi. Welcome to QVC. You're live with Mark Hamill. This is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. I'm from Orange, Texas. Hi. And you're looking at a real Star Wars fan. My mother lives in Texas. Where in Texas are you from? Orange. Orange, okay. And uh, you, like I said, you're looking at a real Star Wars fan. Oh, good. Wonderful. Kathy, what are you dialing in for? I got the trilogy. Oh, the I, trilogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to tell you, I was a Star Wars um, fan club member. For oh, two years. Really? Yes. And you I know the secret code in Handshake? Yes. Oh, there is one. Oh. I was just kidding. <laughs> How about well, there's that? a secret code. Oh, there is? Is there, oh. a, is there a secret handshake? No, I don't know. Yeah, no, well, what kind of club is that? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I paid to be in a club. Yeah, I want a secret I want a secret handshake. handshake. I want the... Uh, the I that. always think of Are Ralph and Ed hats? going off in yeah. the honeymooners to the ra raccoon Oh, log. yes. Yeah. Did you see all the items I've got? Oh, I've been collecting, been collecting for a while. Oh, yes. I've got all the Star Wars cards, trading mm -hmm. cards. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got the Millennium Falcon. I got a puzzle, which I'm put, trying to put together. Right. You know, it's interesting, Kathy, the puzzles, when they were first made by Kenner back in 1978, they were one of the hottest, along with the action figures, they were one of the hottest items they had. And they figure in 1978, they made over one billion crossword puzzle pieces for the crosswords. Oh wow. God. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got so the to on to all that stuff. Really? I also got the action figures, too. Well, there you go. Oh, they're, I've, they're, I've got almost everything. People are paying sometimes upwards of $100 a piece for some of the action figures, That's depending right. on which one. And, and if they're condition. in the package, if they're exactly. mentioned in the box. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kathy, thank you for the phone call today. Thank you for letting me talk to y'all. Okay, bye, and Kathy. Bye, Pleasure. Mark. See you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right now, the poster, now it's well over five, well over 500 of these ordered. C10887, $26.25. Stay with us, a lot more Star Wars collectibles still to come. You're watching QVC, the enjoyable way to shop. Now, now we, hey, my dinner. <laughs> How you get so big is the food of this kind. Listen, friend, we didn't mean to land in that puddle, and if we could get our ship out, we would, but we can't. Oh, so cannot you... get your ship out. <laughs> hey, get out of there. Oh. No. Oh. Hey, you could have broken this. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. great. That is great. Anyway, the Jedi Code. There is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance, there is knowledge. There is no passion, there is serenity. There is no death, there is the Force. And what's that from? That's from the role-playing game? That's from the role-playing game, which we'll be talking about just a little bit later on in the show. As we look at one of our 1977 collectibles, again, they found, I think, a treasure trove of these. This is a Yoda mug, highly glazed ceramic mug and has not been available since 1983. It's $26.25. It holds 16 ounces, and I think if you're the kind of person that uh, needs a little jump start in the morning, I think looking at an 800-year-old Jedi master's face would, <laughs> would flip you right there. What, a, what an incredible concept it was. And, and how, and I'm not saying this because you're sitting here, how well you acted that, because realize you're acting with a puppet. Right. I mean, a brilliantly done puppet, but still a puppet. Yeah. And the amazement that you showed when you realized 
that this great Jedi master, I mean, master, you're looking for Arnold Schwarzenegger, right. you know, and the Lone Ranger all right. kind of rolled up into one, and this little, little dwarf comes out. Well, that's again, you know, what we were talking about, how, you know, not to be uh, predisposed to, uh, you know, uh, think that it's one thing or another. Yes. But also, you know, I think it's sending a message that, that, you know, you don't have to fit a specific type to be someone that, cre you know, uh, embodies great knowledge and so forth. Again, see the uh, going right out to really young, impressionable, uh, impressionable kids who haven't maybe grown into their bodies yet and feel mm -hmm. awkward and maybe an outcast at school. You know, that was a beautiful sentiment. That really is. It, it really I is. I think he's, you know, probably the most memorable character, maybe of all three, but certainly in that second film. It had a kind of spiritual uh, um, and, a, and a, a kind of a, a deeper kind of uh, thing going on than I think mm -hmm. uh, maybe the other two did. How would you explain the force? Well, I, I think it's important not to because it's, it's, mm. it's a, it allows each person to read into it uh, maybe something of their own that makes it unique to each person. Uh, you know, for some people it's, it's theological and other people it's philosophy, you know, it's a philosophical uh, feeling to mm -hmm. it. Uh, but I think it's, it's just vague enough so that uh, people relate to it and say, well, you know, I, I in my religion or in my, mm -hmm. when I meditate, that's something that, you know, I try and achieve. Uh, uh, so it, it, I think it, it encompasses a lot of... Uh, different things to different yeah, people. Yeah, sure. But it's got a very zen-like thing going on with... Very much. Sure. We go back to the phones and say hi. Welcome to QVC. You're live with Mark Hamill. Am I? You sure are. Yes. Mark, hi. How you doing? Peter Who is David. It? Oh, uh, Peter David. Hi, Peter. Hi. How you doing, Mark? Good. Uh, first off, I have been obligated to tell you that Stephanie Kehoe, working the phones for QVC in Virginia, says hello. She is oh, a oh, tremendous great. fan <laughs> and can't watch the show. You know, you should tell people who you are, Peter, because Please. I don't know if you know That's this, true. We're sitting here knowing, knowing who... Uh, we know who you yeah. are, but uh, oh. tell all the people out in America watching now who you are. I am Mark Hamill's pal. <laughs> Good enough for us. <laughs> Good enough. First and foremost, and another a di pal. A diplomat. He's a pal. Peter is being very modest. He is a terrific writer. He's written so many novelizations of the Star Trek stories. He's written original novels of his own, you, uh, Night for a Day. Uh, he writes the Little Mermaid comic book. He writes the, uh, the Hulk for uh, Marvel. Marvel. I mean, he has a column. And at night, I patrol the city looking for crime. Yeah, that, that's... And we love you for that, Peter. We really do. But he also, he writes a column for the comic buyers, guys. And if you collect Golden Age comic books or Silver Age mm -hmm. comic books like I do, this is sort of the trade Bible, and everybody reads it every week. And Peter writes this column called But I Digress, and it's far and away the most popular item in the newspaper. And I thought, what a great forum. He, every week, can just write, I don't know what it is, 1,000 words, 1,200 words a week on any subject that suits him. What you a, know, I mean, not everybody gets a forum like that. What, actually, what amazes me is that anybody pays any attention to it whatsoever. Well, because, actually. I mean, no, it's, and again, he's being very modest. I, I, want, I want to let you know, another friend of yours, Bill Moomy, is watching, want to say hi. Uh, oh. he, was, he was thinking of calling up and... From Lost in Space and uh, Lost right. in Space. Sunshine was, and what have you. Yeah, he played Will Robinson. He was thinking of calling up and saying, Hi, Luke, this is Will. I just want you to know that my robot can beat up your robot. You know. he, yeah, his robot is pretty bad. His robot whined a lot, though. You know, yeah, danger, danger, he, danger, shut up. But also, he had that background. Now, I, isn't there some connection between the robot in Lost in Space and the robot in Forbidden Planet? Only in look. Only well, they, yeah. they had that same kind of waddle and the claws and a very was, large Was model. it designed by the same guy or not? No. no. I no. don't think so. No, not at all. It, was, oh. it, it paid homage. It was oh, certainly okay. inspired by, but okay. because that, that robot on uh, Forbidden Planet, the costume weighed 125 pounds and the stuntmen Ooh. kept quitting because they kept falling you over. Those, you have that stuff at your fingertips. Isn't that don't incredible? You? I know. I've been sitting here and it's like... <laughs> I am stunned. Like, I feel like we should be yelling, we're not worthy, we're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like oh, it, just a little. <laughs> it's Star Wars 101 up here, you know. Yeah, he knows dear, what race uh, Commander Akbar was. I mean, it's I like it was you know, amazing. if he ever goes on Jeopardy and gets yeah, Alex, I'll take Star, Star Wars, Wars for a thousand. 
stories. Yes. Uh, what is, uh, you know, what, what, what was... Mon Calamari? Really? It, 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 was, it was please. just amazing. Yeah. Uh, has the, has the, I just was curious, has the Williamson thing sold out? Because I already almost, got one. Almost. It's about that close. Uh, let me ask... Well, you know, let me ask my Al Williamson is my inker on Spider-Man 2099 over Rick Leonardi's pencil. Is that and yours? Really? I just bought a yeah, copy gorgeous. today. For, I just bought a copy today for Griffin. I didn't even look at the credits. So oh, see, well. and I, I paid full retail mm -hmm. price for that. I'll oh, I would have sent you one. Gee, <laughs> I'll be here. It is. It is in very, very limited supply right now. At 3874, final quantities. It's going to sell out probably in another couple of minutes. That's all the newspaper comic strips. If you're just tuning in, all the Star Wars newspaper comic strips. Signed and numbered by the writer and the artist, only 2,500 will ever be created. We had a, a small fraction of those, and they're almost gone. That price available again only for this show. But Peter, you already have that, right? You have the album. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I ordered. I ordered it early on. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, by the way, I just want to say, uh, Star Wars is lots of fun, but having seen several episodes of yours so far, your Joker is leaving Jack Nicholson's way in the dust. Uh, well, you know what he's talking about. I'm the voice of... In the, the animated series. The Joker right. on the animated Batman. Mm -hmm. Thanks for saying that. You know, so far, uh, uh, it's been doing really well. It's very popular with the kids, and I've got a couple mm -hmm. coming up in the next two weeks. I know one date is November 13th is one called Christmas with the Joker, oh, gee. which is kind of a send-up. Everybody... But that's great. Everybody in the world gets their own Christmas special. I remember I actually saw right. Dean Martin mm -hmm. celebrates Christmas at SeaWorld. Festive, you know? Festive. Well, it really and, is. And so this is kind of a send-up of that. The Joker takes over the TV station. He's got sort of a uh, Perry Como red cardigan on. But oh, I've been having funny. so much fun on that series. That it's, is. And, it, and it's very reminiscent to me, Peter. I think you'll agree. Very reminiscent of the old Fleischer Superman. Yeah. When, yeah. when I first started, uh, a, a mutual friend of Mark's and mine, Paul Dini, was showing me uh, preliminary stuff virtually mm -hmm. right from the beginning and I was stunned very very evocative of Max Fleischer I of the Ma of the old Max Fleischer Superman cartoons I think that the people who have been putting that together are shot aside from showing the inestimable taste of casting Mark as the Joker <laughs> have been doing a incredible job they've just been taking all the best elements out of 50 years worth of Batman well, that's and it, that's one it. You know, For the first time in any sort of adaptation outside the comic books, he's an excellent detective. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the elements that you comic book writers yes. use to make them great mm -hmm. successes. Normally, Hollywood buys the project and then extracts. You know, they buy Wonder Woman and they say, well, the lasso's kind of silly. Let's update that. Right. They, they, they buy comic books and then say, but we don't want to do it because it's too comic booky. And yes. Why, why did they get Absolutely. it if they want to take it out? Yes, Peter, I couldn't agree more. Peter, a great phone call. Thank you so much. Sir. No trouble. Nice talking to you. You great too, to Mark. To you're you. doing great. Thank you. You know, and not just, you know, to say, oh, you know, I, aren't I terrific as the Joker? The, the people I've worked with now, Paul Williams does The Penguin. Yep, yeah. And Adrian Barbeau, Adrian Barbeau is Catwoman, mm -hmm. and Richard Mall is Two Face. And that Two Face yeah. episode I thought was spectacular. I'm only in ten of sixty-five. I mean, I can't mm -hmm. manage them week after week after week. But uh, I know I'd li like it because I've had so much fun doing it. It is a great series, Peter. Thanks again. No trouble. Good talking to you. Bye bye. Regards bye. To Mary Lou. Bye bye. What a <laughs> what a remind you that this is the original mug from 1977. These have been completely off the market since '83. $26.25, the Yoda mug, C10893. They uncovered some of these things in warehouses around the country, and we're delighted to be able to bring them to you. Still available is the Star Wars R2-D2 C3PO plaque for $67. That's C10662. And our other original collectibles, back from 1977, the Chewbacca and Yoda banks, $30.75, C10892. I don't want your help. I want my lamp back. I'm going to need it to get out of this slimy mud hole. Mud hole? Slimy? My home this is. What? Archie, let him have it. 
Oh boy, that, the, the contrast in the Yoda character. And again, we're saying the Yoda character. This was a puppet done by Frank Oz, but he just made it happen. Well, I, you know, the best compliment I ever had was the fact that no one that reviewed it said he's good at working with a puppet. I mean, they spoke to it. And again, I mean, obviously, it's the artistry of Frank Oz and his staff. But like Frank said, you know, if you don't believe it, nobody's going to believe it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love that it is seamless, that he you know, that he seems to take on this life of his own, and, and people forget about it being a puppet. Our one time only has completely sold out. Let me just uh, interrupt there. It is now gone, F3874, so thank you for your calls on that. Things are going to start doing that more and more as we get closer. You mean right while I was sitting here, it sold out? Right that's, while that's what I wanted. Well, you see, <laughs> but you see, you voiced that, and that was taken care of. So <laughs> one of those, one of those is. Uh, oh, is that right? Oh, oh okay. Well, take, see, take those are the you. perks of actually take being down <laughs> the studio. Yeah. Taking care of you. We had these brand new, specially commissioned for us. And these are done uh, of some of your favorite Star Wars characters and uh, icons, I guess. Darth Vader, the X-wing fighter, Chewbacca. R2-D2, and an Imperial Stormtrooper. They're pins. I'm wearing two of them. I'm wearing uh, R2 and Chewbacca the Wookiee. Now, the, the Wookiee, Chewbacca, the arms move. I don't know if you can see that. We'll have to get a real close shot of my lapel now when you get a, get a chance here. I have it pinned right on, right through the lapel of my jacket. Right there, and you can see the little, little Wookiee's arms <laughs> moving up and down. That was the neatest sound the, the the whole Wookiee language uh, and you probably know how he created that sheep played backwards mm -hmm. or fascinating I mean just uh, uh, Ben I, it was it was some animal played backwards I don't know seals or whatever but again you know uh, Ben Burt is mm -hmm. uh, I mean it must be so wonderful for him to be able to be doing exactly what he wants to do and exploring every day all those new sounds well, you have Chewbacca, the Wookiee, from the planet Kashyyyk. Interesting, Wookiees live in trees. Yeah. And the trees are hundreds of meters high. Is the that trees right? are above cloud level in the <laughs> mythos. And they have all these wires strung between all their homes, and they uh, scoot down along the wires to go from home to home. They're probably in the Star Wars universe, the Wookiee is the strongest character. They're also brilliant mechanics, they can fix almost <laughs> anything. <laughs> and the X Wing fighter. Of course, uh, you, you took that baby out for a, quite a spin, yeah. in, uh, especially in the first movie. The Imperial Stormtroopers, who, by the way, after the third movie, after the uh, uh, third film, after the Battle of Endor, Stormtroopers are kind of in short supply. And that's as the oh, myth continues. Right. There aren't too many of them around because you, <laughs> you aced a lot of them. <laughs> also, uh, the little astromech droid, R2-D2, his little arms move, and of course, Anakin Skywalker, or as we know him, Darth Vader. He and Ben, uh, ben Kenobi had a fight uh, decades and decades ago, and he fell into some sort of a molten vat. Right. Seriously burned and deformed his body, so he's mostly machine, as it's pointed right, out. In the first right, right, yeah. Well, I remember asking George a lot about that when we were actually out shooting it in the desert the first couple of weeks of shooting, and... Uh, you know, uh, he told me, I, like I say, just as much as I needed to know. But, you know, when we filmed the, the portion of the movie where uh, uh, he actually says the line, you don't know the truth, I am your father, to protect that secret, they took me aside and they told me what he was going to say. And the director, Irvin Kirshner, knew, and maybe two other people, but just just because things leak so easily, David Prowse, the actor, said, you don't know the truth, Obi-Wan killed your father. And I said, no, just the way you see it, you mm -hmm. see. But then, of course, the crew and whoever, I'm not singling anybody out, leaked it all over the oh, English geez. press. So in all those tabloid newspapers, mm -hmm. nine months before the movie came out, it said, you know, truth is out. Alec Guinness character, true villain in final installment. So we, oh. we had to pull this elaborate ruse oh. just to preserve to, that to secret. secret. That's, That's what I loved about the, uh, in The Simpsons this season. 
They flash back to when Marge and, and Homer are dating, mm -hmm. and they come out of Empire Strike, Strikes Back, and Homer, the boorish yes. boob that he is, says, I never would have believed it. Darth Vader is, Mar is uh, Luke Skywalker's father. Well, the whole line goes, like, no. no, but they're all, you know, he ruins the movie. Oh, no, in the just people this, in line. In this remark, as he's walking by the oh, the people in line waiting to see it all, on the way to the parking lot. And I remember uh, that actually happening. But for uh, most of the critics, like, um, respect if it's like mm -hmm. an Agatha Christie. You know, they will not give right. away the ending. And mm -hmm. I think to a letter, no one gave that away. The most they said, you know, in a surprising Surprise, uh, yes. plot revelation mm -hmm. towards the end. But I was pleased because that, that packed a lot of punch. Oh, boy. Well, the theater gasped. I mean, I saw that film several times as well. And every time the theater just gasped. I want to remind you, these pins are exclusive to QVC. We have them specially commissioned. J16148. They are $17 and the arms on the droid and the Wookiee move. I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. You should not have come back. Four sometimes? Yeah, four. Is that yeah. the longest you'll go? Uh, I have done, I've done nine hours on the air, but that, that was an anomaly. We had a couple of people get deathly ill, and uh, this was about five years ago. I went wow. nine hours straight. I entered a monastery for a couple of weeks <laughs> after that. I thought, I, I've talked enough. Role-playing games, theater of the mind. I love role-playing games. I, I was in a Star Trek campaign in, when I lived in Atlanta for about four years. I ran the same character, finally did something stupid, and he got killed. But these are great. You sit around the house. You don't need any props or costumes at all. All the action takes place here. And we have the brand new, and we're the first folks to be introducing this to you, the second edition of the Star Wars role-playing game. And this is not only great for playing the game itself, but it's also wonderful to give you a background on all the different ships. There are lots of different sections in here. Also, I love it. There are some great posters and ads in here. I love this one. Taking the Star Wars universe seriously, there's an ad here that says, Artificial Intelligence Worth Shaving Your Head For. <laughs> Biotech Cyborg Construct is the best cyborg unit ever designed. It's that simple. And it, these are, I mean, they just, they want to get you into the spirit of things, sure. so they do that. Uh, different uh, original artwork from the film, but it also gives you the complete roles, the uh, complete rules, I should say, of playing the game. Now, these rules have been updated. If you have the first version, they've made it easier to play. All you need to play this are some percentile dice, and they're available pretty much at any toy store, any place that sells Dungeons and Dragons and something. We'll have the percentile dice, and they tell you, I think you need four, four or five percentile dice to play this game, and that's, and that is it. And it goes through, I mean, just, just to go through, I love this, a wanted poster. Oh, I never is saw that, is that neat? For Crimes Against, against the, the Empire. Empire. Luke Skywalker, self-proclaimed Jedi Knight. You have, you have the best bounty. Five, oh, great. 500,000 credits. this is what you get if you're, if you're on the opposition side fighting the rebels. Is that right? Well, that's right. It, get, it gets into the spirit of things if you're playing, because a lot of times the game master in these games will run several characters. He'll run some of the traditional characters, and you get to make up your own. They tell you how to roll the dice to build your character. They get the dexterity. Uh, the skills, the attributes that the character has. And this is the game that can go on for days? Years. Years. Absol I was in a Star Trek I campaign. I thought Monopoly was bad. <laughs> yeah, this is true, and there's not even any Boardwalker Park place. <laughs> I love this. Again, it takes itself seriously. This is kind of fun. Size Noodles and the Max Rebo Band. I mean, the band that played in that, uh, was it uh, Moss Eisley? In the cafe? I think that was in Jedi, so that would have been in Jabba's Palace. Jabba's Palace, that's right. Wow, I got something right. Very good. Okay. Okay, Mark, you have control of the board. Now we <laughs> well, now, you get all that information about, like, I never knew what the Wookiee's planet was called. Where'd you get that? From the book? Uh, actually, I got that from the uh, Heir to the Empire, the, the, the Timothy Zahn book, oh, which right. continues the saga. He's but doing three of those? Yeah, he's done two so far, Heir to the Empire, and they're in your bookstore. I bought them on tape. They're wonderful. 
Dennis Lawson, who played Wedge, mm -hmm. does the narration on those. And, well, and, He's uh, a wonderful actor and a An good friend. Anthony Daniels does the... Uh, uh, also a wonderful yeah, actor. Yeah, does the second, the second one in the story. Now, there is going to be... We're getting an awful lot of calls. There is going to be another Star Wars movie. And as best we know, it's going to be the story of Ben Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker. It will be actually the uh, early days uh, of their camaraderie well, before, before your dad went to the dark side. Simply put, there are three trilogies. One is done. Yes. Then they go back, and that was the middle one. Mm -hmm. They go backwards in time, let's say roughly 20 years. And uh, uh, so it's what they, he's gone backwards on uh, Indiana Jones, too. That's right. Do we detect a trend here? Because uh, if it's bit. a trend, then we can look forward to American Graffiti, the kindergarten years. The ki <laughs> and how I about like how about uh, PH 11.38? That right. would be where in the society when all the people still had hair. That's true. That's true. And what uh, else do we do? Uh, be like uh, Tucker. It would be uh, when it was a little wind-up car. Right, right. <laughs> Tucker, uh, hot, Tucker, the Hot Wheels years. <laughs> That's there, there you go. go. Uh -huh. But eventually, then he'll go ahead and he'll go, mm -hmm. then flash forward into the future, the last trilogy, which would be after us. Yeah. Well, this book will give you so much of a lowdown on what happens in the star. Actually, this book also continues the story after the battle uh, of Endor. It, it takes it takes the story on to its conclusion. Because if you're going to be a game master, if you're going to run one of these games, and it's one of the most entertaining things you could ever do, the book explains it all. It is so simple. You sit around the living room um, gorging yourself, which is the most fun of role-playing games, really, <laughs> sitting there. You're, you're eating in front of the fireplace. With the cheese puff. And just having this great yep. time, and they're rolling the dice, and creating scenarios, and it all happens here. It's, for those of you who've always wanted to act in a Star Wars film, you probably won't get the chance to do that. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, but this will be your chance to act in Star Wars because as a role player, you're acting. This is the second edition from West End Games. If you have the first edition, they've really made it a lot more concise. They've tightened it up and given you a lot more info, too, about the different weapons, the spacecraft, the different races, and what have you. I think uh, uh, the Wookiee planet is also in here. Uh, Kashyyyk is also okay, in so here. Okay, so that's how you learn that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you said it was from the Timothy Zone. That, that's it. It's, it's, it's in both. Well, it's hard to keep it straight. Have you, can you think of another movie that has generated a whole industry of product like this? A mythos and a complete universe that we know the planets of and we know lifestyles. I know, it's wild. Of the Wookiee and famous, I guess. Well, I mean, you know, because when people, since I don't know his exact timetable of when he's going to do these things, um, I just tell them, you know, if you really want to keep going, there's not only the novels, mm -hmm. Dark Horse Comics does a, a really terrific comic book adaptation mm -hmm. of it. Uh, I, I don't know what schedule they're on, monthly, bi-monthly. I think they're uh, bi-monthly. Yeah, but so. beautifully done. Yes. And the Dark Horse Company mm -hmm. does, it like oil paintings. But, and everything, you know, the, the computer games and... Uh, everything from the uh, Nintendo to the Sega to the, I think, game, there's a Game Boy. Exactly, yeah. and then mm -hmm. this. I mean, certainly if you want to keep playing along and, and enjoying yeah. that. I mean, you don't need the films. Exactly. The second edition role-playing game, still available for $26.25. We're among the first people in the country to be offering this to you. Over 300 have been ordered so far. a moment, I'm going to draw today's fifth winner in QVC's $1,000 shopping spree drawings. But first, here's Ellen to tell you how the $1,000 shopping spree drawings work. Entering QVC's $1,000 shopping spree drawings is fun and easy. Once an hour, QVC draws a new lucky number. Every time the current lucky number matches either the first four digits or the last four digits of your QVC membership number, and you call QVC before the next lucky number is drawn, you are awarded 10 QVC shopper dollars, and you're automatically entered in all five of the next day's $1,000 QVC shopping spree drawings. That's right. QVC is now giving away five $1,000 shopping spree prizes every day. There's a new drawing every three hours, starting at 11.30 a.m., that's 11.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., 5.30 p.m., 8.30 p.m., and 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time every day of the week. 
Remember, all you have to do is match the first or last four digits of your QVC membership number with the current lucky number and notify QVC to have your name in the QVC prize drum from which our five $1,000 winners are drawn. If you don't yet have a QVC membership number, call QVC right now and a membership number will be assigned to you absolutely free right over the phone. Now let's find out who the next winner is of a $1,000 QVC shopping spree. Just great. Two hours of Mark Hamill. Thank you, Ellen. And there's a sealed envelope inside this drum for each entry that was validated yesterday. Now let's find out who our next $1,000 shopping spree drawing winner is. Flip it around. Let the force guide me on that one. And we say, congratulations to Vicki Katzerts. Vicki Katzerts of Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Today's fifth winner in QVC's $1,000 shopping spree drawings. Remember, there's a new drawing every three hours each day beginning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Stay tuned for our next hourly lucky number drawing coming up within the next hour because you could qualify to win one of tomorrow's five $1,000 QVC shopping sprees. You're watching QVC, the enjoyable way to shop. For our limited edition Mark Hamill plaque. Mark signed each one of these with a silver pen. It's already mounted and framed. It measures 12 by 15. It's a limited numbered collectible edition. Each one individually numbered, only 1,000, and that is such a low number for a collectible edition. Usually things done in 1,500, 2,500, or maybe 5,000. Only 1,000, 200 of those are gone. You also get a certificate of authenticity from the Catch a Star people attesting to the fact that that is indeed Mark Hamill's signature and just a, a good picture and a, a really rare collectible. I think when you realize it's the only signed thing we have in these two hours, if you're a fan of the film, and I think as you said earlier, so many families now, uh, people that saw the film when they were young have families, and the whole thing is it's sort of like uh, Walt Disney with Snow White. The whole thing's going to start all over again. Young people will begin rediscovering. Wizard of Oz is that way, too. Yes. I mean, every kid mm -hmm. goes through a phase. Uh, my daughter went through a phase. In fact, she drove her brothers crazy watching it four and five times a day. <laughs> she get to the end and rewind it right to the beginning to where they just couldn't stand. We're out of the woods. You know, one more time, they're pulling their hair out. The interesting thing about that shot is it is uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the display piece that was used in Empire Strikes Back in the theaters. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where that came from. That, you know, it's hard to say. People always say, well, what, what, what's your favorite film? And I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm awful fond of the first one. Do you have a favorite from the trilogy? Well, you know, the best way I can describe it is it's like saying, well, who's your favorite kid? You know, you really have, there's different things about all of them that you, uh, you like and you don't. I think the first one certainly had the originality going for it. I mean, people weren't expecting uh what they got and the second one sort of challenged you and and it deepened the whole experience made it a little bit more uh, complex and and also i think it was the first mainstream film where the good guys really got sort of uh, knocked around and it was very m the most unresolved of the three but you know it was very operatic in its construction you know uh and people say you know are you sorry you're not going to be in the other trilogies, but it seems to me that it had a beginning and a middle and a very definite end. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a, it was all self-contained that way. And much like Frank Baum, he's created this universe now. Mm -hmm. he, he, the, you know, the Tin Man and Dorothy and the, uh, uh, you know, the Hell Scarecrow, the they, weren't not, they weren't in every uh, Wizard of Oz uh, book. He created the environment and now he has just you know, uh, so so much he could, so many ways he could go, and uh, uh, really, you know, the, the, like I say, it, it was it had a beginning, a middle, and end. And mm -hmm. I joke now that if we, if you know, you wouldn't want to see now. Luke would be out in the desert meditating, and <laughs> Han and uh, Leia at this point are probably or arguing over orthodontist bills. It, 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 
<laughs> you know, that's a scary thought. Well, that's I, it, but you're though. right. I mean, because you know, Star Wars was the time when we were all young and full right. of hope for mm -hmm. the future and so forth. And you know, we're all grown up now and uh, married and facing the real world. So uh, I still think you know, based because that, that especially *Heir to the Empire* went number one on the New York Times bestseller list. I wouldn't be surprised based on that success and based on the way the saga is continuing i wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a little a little return or maybe a, would you be if that were to happen would you be willing to do uh, another? well but, but the, it won't happen because his whole mm -hmm. idea is to make it multi-generational now he'll he'll mm -hmm. show you what led to uh, what, what led you to saw star in wars. star wars so i mean it's, it's very you know uh you know he has a specific plan for it so fortunately i won't have to make that choice okay you don't you don't think he'll alter from that at all i don't think so i mean again anything's possible but uh uh he, george is a, you know a, an amazing guy really when you think about yeah. uh in the history of this business i don't think there's been that many uh, innovative uh mm -hmm. men of his kind you mentioned walt disney and yeah. and well, that's that's the caliber. I mean, there you go. You're, and, you're probably talking two, three, maybe four right, at the most. Spielberg and mm -hmm. those kind of people. But uh, you know, he's given so much in mm -hmm. terms of uh, this legacy he's left for. You know, it's it was and it's a kind of uh, a throwback to the innocence of the early days of filmmaking. You know, yeah. rather than that cynical kind mm -hmm. of '70s mentality. You know, and it goes full circle, and the pendulum swings back, and we get kind of hard-nosed and vicious, and maybe this kind of stuff will come back. Might indeed. C10664, well over half of what we had to offer you. Already ordered at this point on Easy Pay Ship. As soon as your credit card's approved, we go to the phones again and say, hi, you're live with Mark Hamill. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Doing well. How hey, about you? Yeah, I just want to tell Mark, this is uh, Chip Burden, um, one of his high school mates up in Annandale. Oh, man. Hey, bring back some memories. Oh, yes, it sure does. I you know, you. I'm telling you, this is turning into free long-distance phone calls <laughs> for Mark Hamill. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Uh, what I wanted to bring up is that the, at the time when, when Mark was there, he lived, uh, what was it, Medford Drive, about three blocks from the school? Mm -hmm. uh, Killebrew, Harmon Killebrew yeah. Drive, yeah. And I used to come by on the motorcycle from Mark Meana to pick you up to take you to three blocks to school together. That's right, that's oh, right, geez. yeah. Chip, are you a big Star Wars fan? Oh, yeah, I've been um, following it, you know, ever since back to 77. Mm -hmm. well, have um, you ordered anything from the show so far? Yeah, we got the, uh, the anniversary poster. Oh yeah, the one. Uh, uh, the the fifteenth. Uh, oh sure, the one from uh, from Melanie Taylor Kent. Yeah. Melanie, right. Melanie yeah. Taylor Kent. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. I mean, it's incredible. I, I was just telling you the story of how you yeah. wind up crossing mm -hmm. paths Running through the school years terms and, and what have you. I don't know. That's one of the, uh, I guess, the fun things about uh, having a public life like that. You know, because it's mm -hmm. it's you know there are there. Are, pluses and minuses about being uh, well now he knows what you're doing let's turn this around chip yeah. chip what are you doing nowadays well i'm um down in north carolina now i've got a um a rental business down here mm -hmm. um but i haven't been back up to annandale in many many years i think <laughs> last time i was up there i think uh, was probably in the early part of the 70s after we graduated and everything right but we've been trying to get a hold of old mark uh, you know you know after he got into the the limelight what have you right. <laughs> been trying to have some class reunions going on and of course i haven't made a whole lot of them myself but we've i been haven't trying either to yeah get a hold and of you know everybody. i moved on from annandale and i graduated from J uh, yokohama japan that's right well, that's, that's right yeah. but in fact that story i told i don't know how you, long you've been listening but the the school teacher that mm -hmm. showed up at the stage door of the booth theater was from Annandale High, Mrs. Summers. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. she was the the art I mean the uh, drama teacher. That's right. Yeah. And also, I bumped into Greg Kraft. That's right. And uh, uh, welcome to Mark Hamill. Brad your life. Stewart. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> this is great. Chip, thank you very much for the call today. Nice talking to you again. Nice talking to you, Mark. We'll All get right. together. Take Good care. luck with your rental business. Thank you. Bye bye. Put, put this phone call in chip still. So good. Okay. C10664. The Mark Hamill autograph flack in kind of short supply right now. Easy pay, free payments of $30.50. Still available, those 1977 collectibles, the Yoda or Chewbacca Banks, $30.75. C10892. And the limited edition Star Wars Yoda print, only 750 ever created, $135. C10889.
you don't wear them as suspenders and necktie, it's great to go through and see if you can remember which film the scenes came from. These are actual bits of 35 millimeter movie film. Absolutely authentic, 35 millimeter movie film. And there are scenes from all the Star Wars films here. There's number one. There's, uh, let's see, The Empire Strikes Back. And uh, there's Revenge. Okay, so you have all scenes from all. That's great. That really, that is, these are so, these are suspenders and a necktie. And the necktie is what we call a no-brainer. <laughs> you want to you wanna get some comments at the office. The knot in the tie is already tied for you, and you just pull the elastic around your collar. It's A10181. has to be one of the more unusual collectibles I think we've offered. Real 35 millimeter film, suspenders, and a necktie. Be an interesting stocking stuffer for the holiday season. $36.25. And that's, like I said, it's kind of fun. I wonder what scenes they have on the, oh, same scenes on the tie. Same ones on the, on the necktie. And the tie has a little bit of a gold tone metal down here at the bottom. So you don't go flapping in the that's breeze. A, that's right. That's right. Well, it's not quite a tie. We sell these things called tie button ties, which are uh -huh. great. They button onto your oh, shirt. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. They have a slider mechanism. Right. And uh, it's not quite a tie button tie, but, but something that would get comments and I think it create a lot of interest, as you were. And if you're tired of people not talking to you, <laughs> wear this. They will talk to you. A10181, $36.25. Remember the sweater I was wearing in the Portobello Road promotional announcement you saw a few minutes ago? This is it. It's a unisex sweater. It has removable shoulder pads. It's available in small, medium, large, and extra large. It is tomorrow's special value. It's 100% machine washable acrylic. It's great. It's the uh, Prince of Wales embroidered crest sweater with those Prince of Wales feathers on it. A cream background with brilliant colors of navy, crimson, gold, and green. That Prince of Wales crest embroidered on the chest of the sweater. Unisex styles, small through extra large, your best shot at getting the size you need. Coming up at midnight Eastern Time, A7463, it's $43.34. And of course, that's tomorrow's special value in honor of the eight-hour Portobello Road special that Kathy Levin and I will be doing, kicking off at 2 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow. But that sweater be available now in just about eight minutes. Twenty miles an hour. That's what they estimate the speed of those bikes to have been in the uh, in the Star Wars saga. And interestingly enough, uh, Carrie Fisher was she nineteen when the first film was made? I believe. It sounds reasonable. So. And you know she's expecting now. I think that is so great. <laughs> Not only expecting, but she has. Oh, she she oh. she had a little girl named Billy. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, we sent her a little baby outfit and got a nice mm -hmm. letter back saying, well, we haven't seen you in a yeah, long time. Yeah. I know how that happens. Well, it's interesting how the, the three careers uh, have split off. You're doing so much now with uh, Broadway and with television and with uh, uh, other uh, writing chores and what have right. you. Uh, she has distinguished herself as an author and uh, with postcards from Incredibly, the edge. Incredibly, you know, yeah. talk about a home run first time at bat. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that doesn't surprise me. She's a very, very funny person. and. And we've known that for years. It's just I think the rest of the world is seeing how, how witty she is. The wicked wit of the West Ooh. is what I call her. I like that. I like that. Because that's what she is. We have two things that a lot of you have dialed in for. They're original 1977 collectibles. These have not been available since about 1983. $30.75. See 10892 Chewbacca the Wookiee and Yoda the Jedi Master.
Chewbacca holding one of the two weapons that he used. That's just a, a blaster rifle that he has. But he also had the bow caster. Yes, Nathan loved that. Because, you know, it's, well, it, it, it's so anachronistic, you mm -hmm. know. It's something out of medieval yeah. times. A nice which is, isn't that the nice contrast, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what I think will be interesting about the first trilogy is they go back further chronologically and, mm -hmm. and all the technology will be even in higher contrast. Uh, you know, I mean, I think Star Wars had kind of a dirty, beat-up, lived-in look to it rather it than the pristine sort of oh, yeah. space mm -hmm. hardware you'd seen before. These things were the equivalent of the old family heap, you know, mm -hmm. the way Harrison had to always jumpstart his... Uh, <laughs> Thump on the old Millennium Falcon. Right, on the Millennium Falcon. That was sort of a running gag, wasn't it? What a piece of junk that was. Light drive didn't quite kick in that's all the time right, when he needed that's it. That's right. Of course, you... I remember you hassled him once because the, the uh, Imperial TIE fighters are right on your tail. Right. And you kept saying, come on, come on. And he's saying, you know, you just don't jump into hyperspace, kid. You gotta, and he's flattened the course and everything. And just, he is so great in oh, those movies. He I really mean, is. He, he's, he, I think just uh, uh, hysterically understated uh, comic performance. He's wonderful. He is. Your choice of Yoda or Chewbacca Banks, $30.75. These are original collectibles from 1977 as... We go to Melinda at the QVC Lucky Number Machines. <laughs> we'll find out. A new four-digit lucky number is drawn every hour on the QVC Cable Shopping Channel. Every time that number matches either the first four digits or the last four digits of your QVC membership number, and you notify QVC by phone that you have a match before the next lucky number is drawn, your QVC account will be credited with 10 QVC shopper dollars. And you'll also be automatically entered in all five of the next day's $1,000 QVC shopping spree drawings. If you don't already have a QVC membership number, get yours now. It's completely free, no purchase is necessary, and there's absolutely no obligation. Just call toll-free 1-800-345-1515, and a QVC membership number will be assigned to you on the phone. 4095-4095, current QVC lucky number. Now, Melinda, you're, you're in costume... You, you are in costume. Okay, good. I mean, you're, but you're in costume because you're not going to be on the air with us on Halloween, so you decided to give us a little debut of your... Of your whew, okay, good. <laughs> if, if that wasn't the case, I was hoping she didn't have anything sharp on her, because it would just get a little weird. Thank you, Melinda. You look great. You look great. We have something now that is brand new. We had these specially commissioned just for QVC. These are pendants. They're on 18-inch chains. They have a spring ring clasp on the pendant. We have... Uh, C-3PO. How popular was Star Wars? There was a serial on the market for the longest time, C-3PO's. Yes. And it was a monster hit. Just this wonderful little golden pre-sweetened cereal. Yeah. It sort of was like Cheerios. Exactly. Styrofoam Cheerios. <laughs> exactly. High-tech Cheerios, <laughs> I guess you would say. <laughs> anyway, his, uh, his arms move. And, of course, R2-D2. Little astromech droid. R2-D2, who who was the way you were able to smuggle your lightsaber into uh, Jabba the Hutt's... Oh, that's right. Because a lot of people don't realize that the R2 series had a little compartment, a little hidden compartment right. that was sensor-proof, so you could get your lightsaber that's right That's right. In. Well, you know, everyone fantasized that this is the sort of uh, apparatus we'd... You know, Jetson-like uh, have mm -hmm. this thing that vacuums your rug and mixes you a drink and as an answering service. I mean, it's sort of an <laughs> all-purpose machine. The deluxe model had the, had the answering yeah. service and what have you. And what a personality to be able to invest in what is basically a big hunk of metal. Mm -hmm. Once again, you know, uh, I thought that was one of the great appeals of the films were, were the, just the humanity that got out of all the hardware. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things that followed up, you know, there's a tendency to try and uh, copy other success and and I think a lot of them missed that you know they sort of saw all the pyrotechnics in space but they they missed the heart you know that's all the true. elements came together sure mm -hmm. you know I mean there's movies you've seen that say gee those are great special effects why doesn't it last the way this does and I, I think it's because people really cared about the people and uh, you know and when I say people I mean these as people too mm -hmm. well that's true there, there was such humanity and the way it never ceases to amaze me when I watch the videos that I own and I see the conversations that you have 
with R2. <laughs> and he's going to go just blip, blip, blipping away, and, you're, and sure. you understand every word. And it's like, well, yeah. sure, Luke. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I went in, no, I made sure that, I, you know, you'd write in what was meant to be said there, and mm -hmm. you just have to leave a space. Right. Well, you know what it's like working in television. Exactly. You know, right. you just have to trust that the technical people will make you, mm -hmm. uh, not make you look like a fool. Well, they did, a, a, what a wonderful behind-the-scenes cast. I mean, uh, the people that, oh, the special effects not, teams, yeah. uh, the camera people. John Barry, the people that designed uh, Clockwork Orange. I mean, all of these people, Gil Taylor shot Star Wars, mm -hmm. and of course, I want to know all the, the stories he had about the Beatles, because he shot A Hard Day's That's Night. Right. And uh, it was like that all along, though. Peter uh, Stuschitsky, who shot the second one. I mean, it was like a who's who mm -hmm. of, you know, the best in their field. And the so it was a thrill for me as a film fan mm -hmm. to be able to talk to them about other movies they'd done, whether it was The Shining or Clockwork Orange or Alien. Uh, they, uh, uh, it was fun because they really had a great background in a lot of other movies. It was an A-team. $14.50 for your choice. These are exclusive to QVC. J-16-149, your choice of Star Wars pendants. Uh, the show has just about come to an end here. Let's do this. Before we say goodbye to Mark, we'll take a look at everything that remains in our two hours of Star Wars collectibles. Over 800 trilogies have been ordered. These will be shipped on the 13th of November. These are the letterbox editions, so you get the complete Panavision view, the way the movie was seen in the theaters. You won't miss anything plus the ab abridged version of that George Lucas book and the collector's binder, all for $87. And, of course, the video, The Making of the Star Wars Saga, narrated by Mark Hamill. E6960, shipped on November the 13th. Over 300 15th anniversary Star Wars sweatshirts have been ordered. Those are absolutely exclusive to QVC. Large and extra large available. $26.25, A10180. The limited edition Star Wars R2-D2 C3PO plaque, $67, C10, $662. The Yoda mug, made in 1977, off the market since 83. Over half of those have been ordered, $26.25, C10, $893. Over 500 sets of pins have been ordered so far. Those are, again, exclusive to QVC. J16, $148, $17. Star Wars, the second edition role-playing game, over 400 of those out the door at this point, $26.25. The Mark Hamill autograph plaque, only about 25% remains of what we had to offer you, so three quarters already ordered at this point. Easy pay, three payments of $30.50, C10, 664. George Lucas, Lucas, the Creative Impulse book, $39.75, F, 3873. 700 of these posters have been ordered. It is gorgeous. Two by three feet, $26.25, C10, 887. The Star Wars film tie and suspender set, $36.25, A10, $181. Well over half of these have been ordered. Your choice of Yoda or Chewbacca Banks. Again, these dating back to 1977 when they were made. C10, $892, $30.75. The limited edition Star Wars Yoda print. This is stunning. Artist Michael Whalen doing the work on that. 750 created, each one individually numbered, and we have a handful of those to offer you. QVC price, $135. You have the option of easy pay on C10, $889. And your choice of Star Wars pendants, over 400 of these have been ordered, $14.50. J16, $149. This has been so much fun. Thank you for joining us. What I'm, a treat. I, I have to tell you, I am so impressed. I've done, obviously, thousands of interviews over the years, and I don't think I've met anyone that has the knowledge that you have about this project, and I'm very impressed by that. Well, that very, You've certainly done your homework way beyond the call of duty. Well, that means a lot to me. Well, Thank I you. had a lot of fun. This was, a, this was a blast. We are, again, really busy on the phone lines. If you're on the line, stay with us, and hopefully we can coax you back and do another one of these shows. Really I'd soon. love it. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching and shopping with QVC. Tomorrow's special value, that great-looking English sweater, kicks off in about 90 seconds. You're watching QVC, the enjoyable way to shop. Thursday, catch Dave Justice of the National League.